Road America's third round of the SRT Viper Cup saw the return of Ralph Schultz and Jeff Courtney to the championship. David Pintarek, where he has won a couple of national championships, and Richie Hearn, a celebrity driver, back. The racing was just this intense. Louis Philippe Montour taking on Ben Keating. He fought the brilliant fight, but in the end, it was Keating atop the podium with Montour second, and Jill in his return on the podium as well. Now it's time for round four at Road America. This is the SRT Viper Cup. Hi everybody and welcome to America's Nurburgring, Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for round four of the SRT Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra. We are ready to go for this fourth round of the championship. And here is your starting lineup based on an inverted finishing order from round three. Kurt Solberger will be inside of row one with Mark Montour alongside. Row two will be the ever improving Dave Mazik on the inside with Jim Booth, incredibly quick this season, along the outside in his McDonald's Viper. Then it'll be Jeff Courtney returning to the championship inside row three, joined by Ralph Gilles, the two returnees on row three. Row number four, Louis-Philippe Montour, who had a great run to the podium in round number two and three, and Ben Keating, the defending champion on a three-race win streak, and Richie Hearn and Darren Prescott, our two celebrity drivers, fill out row number five. Darren Prescott, an actor and an incredible stunt coordinator. Of course, Richie Hearn, a former open-wheel superstar. As always, a standing start in SRT Viper Cup action. Looks like the grid is clear. You see the wheel and lights? They come on when they go out. Round four will be underway. Always fascinating. Oh, and Courtney stalls, and there's contact. That's Hearn getting into the back of Montour. And Hearn gave him a pretty good clout. Yes, he is able to restart and continue. Here's a look at it from onboard with LP Montour. There in the rearview mirror, you see the bump. And it was a good one from Hearn. Everybody eventually able to continue. And it's Solberger, the veteran, second most experienced driver, along with Ben Keating in the field. And Keating, by virtue of winning in that third round, starts deep in the pack. He's got a long race ahead of him. And he is tucked right in behind already. Ralph Schill in that SRT Viper as they start to make their move up through the pack. Ralph on board with him at this point, already up in the fifth spot. And Keating trying to take the run, come along the outside. Tough to do down into turn five. And Keating's got the nose ahead. He pulled it off. Unbelievable move by Ben Keating in that ViperExchange.com machine around the outside of a very talented driver in Ralph Schill's. That was a great move by Keating, showing you why he is the defending series champion and the winningest driver in SRT Viper Cup, presented by Pennzoil Ultra Competition. And he's enjoying a great view in front. Look at this move, Mazik around, and here comes Mark Montour down the inside into turn eight, and Solberger says no. He absolutely shut the door, hangs on to second spot, pushing Montour back into third. There is your new leader, Dave Mazik. I'll tell you, incredible story for Dave after uh, coming into the championship, hooking up with the Archer brothers, getting some coaching, and I'll tell you, those guys know Vipers, and they know racing, and it is showing with Mazik's run. Solberger, that experience showing right now. Montour right there in third through the kink. One of the iconic corners here at Road America. A gut check corner to be sure. We're on board with Keating taking the run, coming up on the back of Jim Booth. Not quite able to get it done here. Going to try the outside move. I don't think he really was looking at a pass. I think he just got in deeper than he anticipated. Booth protected a little bit down to the inside. Keating had nowhere to go but to swing the outside. But look at the, he continues to just shove the nose in, trying to let him know that he is there. Lots of pressure right now from Keating as we now right on board. And, oh, and a big move on tour doing the big tank slapper. And that was just a little bit too much welly on the paddle, and it got away from him. But fortunately, a lot of room down there. But it's going to cost him dearly. And look at this. We're on board with Jeff Courtney and Richie Hearn just sweeps by him as well. Hearn got some damage on the left front corner of that car. That is not going to be a happy ACRX right now with some aero imbalance on that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But Mazik continuing to lead. But good credit to Kurt Solberger as he is staying close, not letting Mazik get away. And hanging on to that second spot. We've already seen some pressure from behind as they come out of three, make the run down the Moraine sweep. We hop on board with their leader. This is the view you love to see here at Road America. Not a car in front of you as your P1, and the view 
beautiful Kettle Moraine Forest sweeping by. Now the plummet deep on the brakes, but it's downhill. And look at the big move there. Booth looking to the inside, trying to get back around it. He and Keating in a side-by-side -side battle, and Booth got it. Great run up the hill. Keating had to give way. And nope, not able to get it done there either. Boy, some great stuff as we now hop on board with Keating as he is in this superb battle with Jim Booth and that McDonald's Viper through seven, down into eight. Now, deep on the brakes, Keating, this is a great overtaking move if you can get it done. And he was confident in it, and he's through. You can see with the double view up top, that is Booth letting him slide by, realizing, nope, he had me. So Keating already, from his deep starting spot due to the virtue, as I said, of winning in round three, up into a podium spot already. Now he is gonna set sail after savvy Kurt Solberger. There we go, into the kink. Boy, that is a confidence corner, and you can see Keating making up ground. He loves what this Viper of his is doing, and it is uh, doing some beautiful things in the hands of Ben Keating. So there you have it, Mazik, Solberger, Keating thinking about it. Solberger again, not allowing him enough room to make the move, and Keating tucks right back in behind. And you can see Keating now again showing the nose. He can't get it done in 13. Tough place to make a pass. And what Keating really needs to do, he's being really aggressive, but what's going to pay off is if he can lay back a little bit, get a run somewhere, use the toe into one of these great overtaking areas. On board with LP Montour. And look at that's exactly what Hearn did. Didn't run up on him too quick. Got a great drive off the turn. And he is by Montour and now up in his sixth place. LP back into seventh of this. And look at the pack. These guys running incredibly close right now. Again, Keating trying to look down the inside. And Solberger again denies him. Great racing by the veteran Solberger to try and hang on to this second spot. And Keating feeling the heat as certainly Jim Booth going nowhere in this battle. All over the back of Keating as Keating now gets the run. Laid back that time, got a nice drive and is able to get up the inside. And a good run, is he gonna do it? Yes, yeah, Solberger is able to, uh, he really just has to give way because that was such a great launch off of three by Keating, set up by giving him room to do that. So Keating is now second, one guy in front of him, and it's Mazik in this number three, white and black with red striped Viper, then Keating, then Solberger, but again, a great run by Booth sitting right there in the four spot. Keating again, looking inside, looking outside. Boy, this is some great action. You love to see this type of racing here. Out of turn seven. Boy, he's on the outside, down into turn number eight. He's got to get way in front and pinch. He does. Boy, again, he went so deep down at eight, using all of the track on the exit. The way you make that work is you get far enough in front that the guy you're passing has to give way and tighten his radius up. He's doing it to perfection. It's up front. Welcome back to Road Americas. We're underway with the fourth round of the SRT Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra and uh, the sweeps of the Kettle Moraine Forest. Four miles of tarmac winding through this glorious land. And right now, it is this guy. Boy, Ben Keating is absolutely hooked up here and loving this. But the war is behind him, and it is an intense one. We're on board with Ralph Schills running in fifth place, coming right up behind Booth. That is fourth. And look at behind Jill is Richie Hearn. You can see the damage to that left front and that mirror shot, if you will, that back camera. And Hearn, that is not going to be a very happy car as Booth now takes the run at Solberger. They are side by side down the Moraine sweep, heading into turn five. You can make the pass from the outside here, but you've got to have somebody willing to give it to you. And Solberger is not. He just out deeped him down into five. Beautiful job by Solberger. Booth trying to do the over under up into six. And you got to get a better run than that. Not going to happen. We're on board. Oh, look at this. Ralph Gilles watching that battle ran just a little deep and Hearn swept by underneath. So, Richie Hearn, you need a driver of his caliber to drive a car that's undoubtedly working the way his is right now. Look at this Solberger coming after Mazik right now in this battle for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. That's how close it is right now in this run. This is great stuff. And I'll tell you, if there, I, I have a gut feeling that this was the track that the engineers had in mind when they came up with this car. 
Obviously, you've got long corners like this where the arrow package is key, but three long straights with his V10 just gets to sing. And uh, this car is loving running here, and these drivers are just eating this up with this kind of battling. We hop on board with Jim Booth, the McDonald's Viper in fourth place. Look at this battle up in front, and look at Solberger trying to go down the inside. Amazing, and he gets it done. Well, I'll tell you, Solberger putting all of his veteran experience to play right now. Booth got a little bit caught up in it, and look at Hearn. Well, I'll tell you, Richie Hearn, I think he is liking what he's feeling right now, even though that car's, ooh! However, he just got, he did, he got into the back of Mazik right there. Hearn got a great run out of 13. Thought he might get down the inside into 14, and Mazik protected a little bit. And they did the, uh, the tank, as they say, and a piece of bodywork comes flying off of one of the cars. Hearn's already got a little bit of damage now. And you can see there's kind of a big air scoop right there. Slow for him, even with that run, to try and get by Mazik. Yeah, it looks like he might do it, but look at the run Booth got. He's underneath Mazik as well. Smart choice there by Booth following Hearn, knowing Hearn got that little bit of a run. So Hearn now settles into third. Former IndyCar superstar, not racing a lot these days, but still busy. I work uh, as an instructor out in Las Vegas for um, a company called Exotics Racing, where we have you know Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, Porsches, whatever you want and people come and drive and then I basically ride with them and you know try to teach them how to drive it properly and have, have a good time and you know we have a, we give rides too sometimes in those cars so I'll do that sometimes so I'm in a car all the time I'm just not I just the competition there's no competition so I mean I'm here to win but I'm not gonna you know risk it all to do that it's you know I'm, I'm here to have a good time and keep the car in one piece and, and at least visually I know what the track I can even last night I can think about the track and know which way it goes and these cars are fast but they're a little heavier so you know it's a little bit more slow motion than the knee car so it might help a little bit although the track seems a lot more narrow than I remember it but it's still still a lot of fun and it's an awful lot of fun to have a driver of Richie's caliber back in this championship and he was quickest in both of the practice sessions uh, he had the DNF in round three so he had to start at the back and that's why we've been enjoying this wonderful battle right to the front. There is a look at Jeff Courtney as well as he's trying to come up through the back. Fierce racing at Road America continues. We'll be right back. Wisconsin renowned dairy farm country, but for this fourth round of the SRT Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra, different beasts are about. The Vipers are screaming at Road America for this fourth round of the championship. Ben Keating to the front and leading pretty comfortably right now has built that margin up. And uh, Keating's become an awfully savvy racer over these last three years, uh, honing his skills, doing some other racing as well to try and sharpen things up and he's got it down, but behind him, we've got some great battling going. Jeff Courtney right now, sitting in the third spot, and it's a kind of lonely one right at the moment, or so you would think from these GoPro cameras, but that wide angle, kind of a little bit deceiving, as you can see, not that far behind him is Jim Booth. Now, he has worked his way up into third, and the guy in second right now, of course, is Richie Hearn, and LP Montour, not too far out of this picture, but for Ralph Gilles, slipped back into seventh place at this point and is now trying to get around the 84 of Solberger. Got a good run going this time. And again, Solberger dissuading him just a little bit, but giving him a little room and he opened it up and right there, Gilles jumps on the opportunity down the inside and through. So right now, Ralph Gilles up into sixth place. He's got to find it right now to get up to this battle of Montour and Booth. And exactly what Ralph wants to see happening in front of him is Montour working booth, inside, outside. If they start battling each other, running off of the fastest racing line, it slows them up. And just like this, Booth running way, way wide, and Montour having to check up as Booth regathered things, and boom, Jill all over the back of Montour right now. And that's that momentum swing. Uh, when you've got cars like this, uh, you know, even with the power, you lose the momentum. And ooh, look at that, Montour, the back end, stepping out through the carousel. He is driving the wheels off that thing. But just that little moment down in turn eight with Booth running wide, Montour having to give him a little room uh, when he saved it. And it has allowed Jill right into this battle. So it is furious right now. He's in sixth, Montour fifth, and up front, Booth in the fourth spot. Then it's Courtney, 
then it's Hearn, and then your leader, Keating, who is, uh, boy, can he do it? Can he win four straight? Unbelievable. But meanwhile, we're fascinated with this battle. We're fascinated with what's unfolding right here. Through turn th uh, 13, the Billy Mitchell turn, and up into 14. Oh, Montour going for it down the inside of 14. That, if you don't get it done, you're dead meat up the straight because you've got to have the run out of 14. And look at the margin already that Booth has over Montour and Shields is coming. Ralph got that great run and Montour, again, slowed up as a result of that. And here he comes. Can Ralph make it work down to the inside? He's looking. He does. He's alongside watching the rear view mirror shot. Boy, still no sign. Oh, and Montour is all four wheels off of the exit curbing. Gathers it up, but they are still side by side. Now down into, look at Montour fighting with him, still side by side through three. Again, using up all the track. But you can see a little bit of a bobble there, and they are still mirror to mirror underneath the Johnsonville Bridge. There we are, on board with Shills, and look, can't see Montour to the side. There he comes through. So after that mistake, he's able to gather it up and hang on to the spot. Now he's still squeezed to the inside. Look at Ralph trying to diamond that corner, get the run up the hill. Not quite enough. He needed to square it up more. And he just didn't have the juice. Now, Ralph is the CEO and president of SRT, which is Street and Racing Technologies. Earlier, we asked him to explain what the concept is. Racing is in our namesake, you know, street and racing technology is what we're called and, and you know, a lot of our vehicles, actually all of the SRTs are developed at, at, at one time in their development on a racetrack and sometimes we surprise ourselves as we, we take these production chassis and tweak them and augment them, we're like, wow, these, this thing's really coming alive. And the Grand Cherokee is one of those vehicles. When we started developing it and exploiting the, the adaptive um, suspension and the, the torque biasing that we can do with that platform you know, shifting the weight down and lightening it up a little bit and using some obscenely wide tires, all of a sudden the platform just came alive and our engineers started going, look at each other like, this thing is very capable. Uh, kept developing it and developing it. You know, and Marco, you know, he's very accomplished and he's gotten actually better as he's developed it. Uh, you know, as the Jeep has gotten so good, he's had to raise his game because it kept shocking him. You know, the thing really bends a lot of physics. No matter what you throw at that vehicle, it just kind of adapts and goes on its merry way and it seems almost to be smiling at you. Let's go, buddy. You know, and that's what's cool about the, the Grand Cherokee, but it's also what's what's embodied in every SRT has that, that ability to kind of bond with you and become your, your best friend. Boy, and right now, Ralph is at the helm of his best buddy, the way he's given this car a ride right now. It is fun to watch, but it is Mr. Keating up front, sitting in second is Hearn, and there is Jeff Courtney in third. Here's your battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Just some great racing in Road America. And when we come back, we'll take you right to the checkers. It's an absolutely glorious day at Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin's Road America, and we are closing in on the finish of the SRT Viper Cup presented by Pennzoil Ultra's fourth round. And while we were in break, there's the pass Ralph Shields laid on Booth and picked up that fourth spot. And uh, now he's just got to hang on to it because I have the feeling that Mr. Booth is not going to go quietly. Meanwhile, White Flag is out, and here he is, Ben Keating, on the way perhaps to an amazing fourth consecutive win to start off the season, the defending champion. I'll tell you, you can see why he earned that championship last year, and he looks absolutely determined to not go down to the last race like he had to in 2011 to clinch that championship. But great battling behind Courtney now under attack from Ralph, and not quite able to get it down there, down into turn one. But now is urgent time, it's go time. If Ralph is gonna make this move and get up onto the podium, he has got to find it right now. And the problem is, is Jeff Courtney, as we said, does not live very far from Road America. It's, every ounce of it is his home track. He knows it very well. And uh, even if he may not have the fastest car necessarily out there right now, he knows how to hold position in Road America. Again, it's a four mile glorious ribbon through these 
uh, th this beautiful setting. Not the widest track, though, so if you drive defensively and you do it smart, you can hang somebody up for just a little bit. No problems like that for Ben Keating as he exits turn eight. Look at that. Just going to throttle, leaving a couple of big black stripes. I think he's having some fun out there on this last lap, knowing he's got the margin to play with. Sitting a relatively lonely second is Richie Hearn, and then Courtney and Ralph Gills right now having this phenomenal scrap as they come out of turn eight on the way. This is the battle for the final podium spot. And uh, right now, through that carousel, and this is a balancing act, all the way through this corner with big, heavy, high horsepower cars, uh, you're just on a knife's edge all the way through. Then into the kink, which is just pure commitment. You turn in blind, you don't see the exit, and when you get to that turn in point, there's that arm coach just staring you in the face, and it is flat out for most cars. Meanwhile, Keating through 13 for the last time, now up into 14. Just Feather it in there a little bit, breathe the brake, give it the throttle up the hill, and Ben Keating, unless something unbelievable happens, is going to win his fourth consecutive race and his ninth career win in SRT Viper Cup competition. There it is, the checkers fly, and Ben Keating putting an early lock on this championship. Meanwhile, there's Richie Hearn in second, and here's the battle to the line. Courtney, we're on board with Gilles. Courtney is there right down the middle of the track. Courtney doing exactly what he had to do. And as a result, he'll be the final person on top of the box in third spot. But there is Ben Keating, just that ViperExchange.com car, two of them on the podium. And look at the LP Montour flashing the lights at Jim Booth going, I may not have got you, but that was fun. Here are the results. Keating, Hearn, Courtney on the podium. Jill a battling fourth. Jim Booth in fifth, and Montour, Solberger. What a great drive by Solberger. Mazik in the eighth spot, Montour, and our other celebrity driver, Darren Prescott, uh, in that tenth spot. So congratulations to all. Let's take a look at the points after four of ten rounds. Keating stretching that margin, almost 100 points in front of Booth, and Mazik, Montour, Solberger, and Pintaric dropping back, not able to make the start today after his big shunt in round three. Then Montour, Courtney, the Nelsons, Erica Laird, and Dave Decker completing your top 12. For a remarkable fourth time this season, Tom Natchez bugging Ben Keaton. Well, in Las Vegas, three in a row is pretty good, but four in a row is almost unheard of. I think it's fitting that the guy who sold more Vipers last year than anybody else on the planet has won four SRT Viper Cup races in a row, Ben. It was uh, it was an exciting race. It uh, The ViperExchange.com Viper did extremely well. Uh, I mean, we ran hard. The track got kind of greasy and uh, and uh, we're sliding around a little bit. It was lots of fun. Here's a piece of news I've been saving for you. You're the winningest Viper Cup driver hey. in the world right now. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That is exciting news. <laughs> I haven't been keeping up with that stat. Well, we've been watching it like a hawk. Congratulations, Ben Kitty. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. A dominant start to the season. Congratulations to Ben Keating. Want to follow us? Well, you can on Twitter at DriveSRT, on Facebook at SRT Viper. That's the page. And on the web at DriveSRT.com. Some tremendous racing from all of our competitors. Thanks to all. And to Ben Keating, well done, my friend. Next round coming up at VIR, Virginia International Raceway. Join us there. For Tom Natchew, I'm Greg Kramer. Take care, everybody. <laughs>